Hey everyone, I hope you're all well, having a great day. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of our Pokemon VGC 2019 Battle Series. It is Wednesday, so we're in the middle of the week. We played a couple of games already this week with this team that you're seeing on your screen right in front of you now. If you missed any of the games up to this episode so far this week and you'd like to check those out, go back up here, I'll link a card for you. You can check those out before coming into today's episode. We've had some really good games actually with this team. We made a few changes from the, the squad that we were playing with started with last week with the reindeer core and uh, we're gonna have a little bit of fun going into the the rest of this week so today tomorrow we'll play this variant and then on friday we'll introduce some of those really fun suggestions that you guys have suggested so far this week and thank you so much to each and every one of you that have suggested things and um, there have been some really crazy comments and i've tried to squeeze as many of them in for friday's episode as possible because the team on friday is going to be a lot of fun it's actually in the battle box now so i'm going to play through today and tomorrow's episode and then hopefully do Fridays and then it'll be a lot of fun hopefully but I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on the squad and what your thoughts are in general on the reindeer core. I do like it, I can see that it's probably not as viable as it once was in the Sun or the Moon series that we, when we first played it but I still think it's got a place in the format for sure, for definite. Um, but as always the team is down in the description below as well as the raw poker paste and just the, the, the raw paste as well. If we can get my words out it's been a busy day bear with me um, and without further ado I guess we'll just jump straight into it guys so let's pop some music on we'll not forget today and um, as always if you if you enjoy this sort of content please make sure to leave a like do subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more Pokemon content and uh, do leave your comments because I love hearing from you as I say it's been a bit of a crazy day today uh, but we've got a first opponent so let's jump straight into team preview Okay, our first opponent today is running a team of Kyogre, Iveltal, Tapu Lele, Astakataka, Incineroar, and Gengar. So this is a really kind of popular call that we're seeing at the minute, the um, the Evel Ogre team, or Ogre Vettel, however we're pronouncing it. Um, but the premise of the team is to trap your opponent in with the Mega Gengar that's there. Um, utilize Tapu Lele because it's normally scarfed on this sort of build. And then you've got a Trick Room Switch with the Stack Attacker, which is really, really very versatile within this team, especially with the trapping from the Mega Gengar. One of the things that we do have going for us here is that we ha you know, we're not combating the rain. We want the rain to be up, so we've got that on our side. Um, Swampert actually does super well in this match. We've got to watch out for, obviously, the Intimidate support from the um, Incineroar, but Swampert generally does pretty well here. I mean, I'm kind of tempted to lead off with Tornadus just to get some speed control going, but also we could bring Kyogre. Kyogre. Um, we probably want Incineroar here. I mean, Ferrothorn could be also very good in this match. Like, Ferrothorn's actually really good in this match if we can keep the rain up. Um, kind of tempted to go Ferrothorn. Do we want Tornadus? Tornadus, Tornadus, do we want it? Or do we want Incineroar for a bit of Intimidate support? Yeah, let's go, yeah, let's go there. Let's go there. Mm. I'm just thinking, maybe Tornadus would have been better for the, the speed control for sure, but at the same time, Incineroar gives us a nice switch into stuff like Gengar, stuff like Tapu Lele that are gonna be Threatening big damage on our Pokemon like Kyogre and Swampert, you know, so um, We are gonna see Kyogre and Gengar come out for my opponent now, One thing that pops into my mind straight away here is do we play in future Thunder on our Kyogre? It gives us a bit of a better option outside of Ferrothorn to hit opposing Kyogres, which we haven't got so many options with right now um, But one of the things we do do we put a lot of pressure onto the, the Gengar for sure with our Mega Swampert um, uh, like to me, it would protect it. Would definitely protect. It. I mean, we probably get a free water spout off for sure with our with our Kyogre. Depends what kind of build the the opposing Kyogre is. We could just go for an Origin Pulse. Um, I do want a Mega Evolve, but I probably feel like I should protect here rather than do anything else. And like, do I fear getting trapped in? That's a big thing. I'm not really too worried about anything coming in on Kyogre and an Origin Pulse. I do like ridiculous amounts of damage so the only thing we're not doing the big damage to is the opposing Kyogre it's just whether or not I click water spout or origin pulse I'm probably better off clicking how confident am I that we're out speeding the opposing Kyogre hmm 
Let's go war spout. We'll soon find out. But I, I think the Gengar protects here. I think you want to utilize your Kyogre to either knock out or weaken the, the Swampert and not lose your Gengar. Um, so that would be my my best bet. I don't see the Gengar. Like, the Gengar could not protect, could go for a substitute, but I think <clears throat> we're going to get punished if they don't and do do something like that for sure. Now, there's the protect from the Gengar. Now, you've got to imagine the Gengar probably switches out this next turn. Oh, this is why, this is why we want Thunder. Ugh. And this is why our, our Water Spout is doing nothing. Nada. Nada. Okay. Mm. And now we're in a, a real nasty place because we can go for the Gengar. But like I said, the Gengar probably switches out. Hmm. Oh, I don't think the Gengar stays in. We've kind of baited that, so I think like our best bet is to go stomping into the Kyogre. I mean, we could go for Waterfall and try and flinch. But, and Origin Pulse is the... Because I think the Kyogre actually goes for a Water-type attack here to try and get the, um, the Swampert, rather than the Thunder. Okay, so Veltal will hit the field. We could have Ice Punched that slot as well, for sure. Hmm. If Swampert can get through this turn, that's that's great for us. I mean, that damage isn't too bad. It's actually going for the Thunder. It's going to target into our Kyogre. So I don't mind too much. Yeah, that's not too bad, to be honest. As long as the rain is up. We are, the thing is, we haven't brought Xerneas here, which is like, man, Xerneas right now would be amazing. Um, we could bring in Ferrothorn. Although, the Incineroar is probably better to bring in, to be honest. And we can fake a Kyogre, put it in range for a Stomp and Tantrum, Ice Punch the Veltal. It's probably got the Z-Move, but I don't think the Z-Move picks up, how oh, does it? Well, it definitely doesn't on minus one. For sure. So let's go Ice Punch into Ibeltal and go for that fake out into Kyogre. Because as long as we get the fake out onto the Kyogre now, mm, it would be in Stomp and Tantrum range. Maybe should have Z moved it. Okay, what are we going to see the Ibeltal do? I mean, a freeze here would be perfect, wouldn't it? Do you think he's that? Oh! <laughs> Flinch squad, we've got a flinch. <laughs> Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Wow. Pretty bad. Pretty bad. Should we flare blitz it? Should we flare blitz it? I don't feel like. I don't feel like we should really. Uh, let's stomp it into the Kyogre. Um. And yeah, will you turn out onto the Velto? We'll get Ferrothorn in. I don't suppose this will kill the Kyogre, but you never know. I feel really bad for my opponent right now. The rain has lifted, which is not great for Swampert, because we need the rain. We need the rain. Although, it doesn't really need it so much, because the Gengar is still threatened by it. And you would not, it's not going to be able to damage, out damage us one on one anyway. Okay. Taking the Veltal out of the game though like that, I mean... We called it and it happened. We can't, we can't be mad. I mean I would be so mad if I was my opponent. I do feel, I do feel bad for them. Um, we could do the gracious thing and forfeit, I, I guess we could. Let's just gyro ball into the Veltal, get rid of it before it does thaw out. I'm gonna see a substitute from the Gengar. Still frozen solid, which is a shame because it's probably gone for the Z move. Like it is gone for the Z move, and I don't suspect it picks up the knockout into Swampert. But that's not the point. It's putting it in range for a Shadow Ball for the Gengar to pick up the knockout. Now the rain's gone, which it would be able to do. So you've got to think like, without that freeze, I don't think we we really come back into this match. Um, so that it's it's pretty big, um, and it's one of those really, really like not ideal mechanics isn't it it's it is really 
really bad, really bad, really bad, really bad. Um, okay, let's, I mean, lead seed, the stacker, and we'll go stomping, but there's the forfeit. So I do apologize to my opponent. I would say good game, but I'm sure they're not feeling like a good game right now. Hopefully we can go on to our next one. I think one of the things, like I say, like not bringing Xerneas there was a bad call, but I think more of the problem with the team is not having something to actually hit opposing Kyogre's when we do bring that combination, especially when we don't have Ferrothorn out in the field. Like if we've got Ferrothorn out in the field, it's not so bad, but when we're getting trapped in, and maybe that was something we should have probably considered, maybe switching Ferrothorn in for Kyogre. Um, on the turn that we're pressuring the Gengar. It makes a lot more sense to do that rather than leave our Kyogre in and just hope, ah, uh, well, hopefully we get some, like, big damage off with, with Water Spout, Origin Pulse, and then banking on, you know, outspeeding the opposing Kyogre. It's not the most reliable way to, to kind of look at that situation. Like, looking back at it, it would have been a lot better. We're, like, Ferrothorn's not in the worst situation there. If it does switch in on what would probably likely be a Sludge Bomb into that slot, and maybe a water spout at, at worst, but we're protecting Swampert. We switch the Ferrothorn in, it's going to be able to take that combination of attacks all day long. And then we pressure really heavily the Kyogre. And then, you know, the Gengar's pressured as well, so we can react from there and go from there and make sure that we're keeping up that pressure. The Gengar switches out, it leaves room for us to switch out our Ferrothorn. We know my opponent didn't have their Incineroar either, so it makes life easier for Ferrothorn to kind of operate. So. There's that angle to look at it from. We got particularly lucky there. Um, I will just hop over to a screen so we can see our rating as well. It has taken a bit of a tanking, but I've been doing testing. I'm gonna say <laughs> I've been testing stuff. So outside of the, outside outside, which hasn't been gone. Well, it's been gone all right. It's been fine, hasn't it? But. We'll creep back up, no problem. It's taking a little bit longer to find the opponent than usual. If it does take a little bit longer and we have to search again, I will just cut this right now and we'll come right back when we've got our next opponent. And we've got our next opponent of the episode. So, Asada, and we'll hop straight into team preview, my friend. They are playing a team of Rayquaza, Incineroar, Kyogre, Ferrothorn, Tapu Koko, and Stack Attacker. So we've got the the Rayquaza, Kyogre combination there, really powerful combination between the two. You've got the airlock that allows the Kyogre a lot of room. The airlock's going to be a little bit awkward for us to, um, to get things like Swampert going because we rely on the rain. As long as the airlock is active, then we've not got that rain. In the swings of things, obviously the, the Ferrothorn as well does give us a lot of issues, so we need to be, well, we're relying heavily on Tornadus and Incineroar here to deal with that Ferrothorn, so I think both of them are required here. Bringing the Tornadus does obviously cause a few issues, especially um, with the Tapu Koko that could come out, and that's why Swampert's like a really nice lead here, I think. I'm kind of leaning towards Swampert Ferrothorn as a lead. Um... Do we want our own Ferrothorn? It doesn't do too bad, you know. It really doesn't. Do we want Tornadus? Oh, I think we need our own Kyogre for sure. Um, it's whether or not we want Xerneas. And then kind of with the two steals, it's really putting me off a little bit. So, hmm. Tornadus could be what we need, uh, especially Tailwind. Put Kyogre in a nice position. Yeah, we'll go with that. Am I regretting already not bringing Ferrothorn? I feel like probably am, but... I mean, I said it on Monday. I feel like the team, like... One of the issues with the team is it's got, like, that... Where you... I don't know how to explain this well enough. Because I feel like with four Pokemon, I'm not quite covering everything. So it's, it, the build isn't quite right. Because I'm always wanting that fifth Pokemon to be squeezed in just to get the extra cover there. Um, whereas with a, like a really cohesive build, you can pick your four and you think, well, right, I'm, I'm fine, I can kind of cover everything, all angles here. Or for the best part, really good teams, that's what they generally do. And I don't feel like I've kind of clicked it yet with this team. Um, it doesn't quite feel like it's kind of that got that glue to it that you normally have with a kind of polished team. But that's the, that's the thing, that's what you test, isn't it? Um, we are going to see the Kyogre and Incineroar come up for my opponent. Um, I mean, one thing we could potentially do is just Mega Valve. 
Mega evolve. I mean, I could bring in Ferrothorn here. But I don't have it, do I? I don't have Ferrothorn. Um, I could bring in Kyogre. My own Kyogre. Save Swampert for later, I guess. It's not a bad idea. Um, it's just then we don't have a really decent switch the next turn. Um, I'll Mega Evolve. I'll go for a Waterfall into the Incineroar. And I'm going to just fake out the opposing Kyogre. I guess the scary thing here would be a faster Incineroar. Okay. Pharaoh coming in. My opponent's book, Pharaoh. Now, a big mission here is to get rid of the. Um, get rid of the Kyogre so we can actually get rid of the Ferrothorn because without it and without Superpower, we can't really do too much to the Ferrothorn. And um, we do take a little bit of Iron Barb damage in the process. It does reveal leftovers. Um, hmm. I don't really want to... I can't lose Ferrothorn. That's like the one thing I can't... I can't afford to lose is Ferrothorn. Um, I'm going to protect Swampert. And I'm going to bring in Tornadus. Hmm. This is again like the problem like we've got. Not really having enough to deal with opposing Kyle. Guys, we're finding this more and more... And it's because we haven't brought our Ferrothorn. We need to bring our Ferrothorn to these sort of matches because it's really kind of highlighting in these games where the issue is lying that we've not really got the offense, especially with, like, no Thunder on Kyogre. I think if we had Thunder on Kyogre, it kind of opens the door a little bit for us to cover that a bit better. But we're going to see just a Leech Seed from the Ferrothorn. Um, now, we can get a Tailwind up. But, I mean, we're going to see a power whip into... <sighs> you like, we can get a Tailwind up, but, I mean... I, we have to sack Incineroar, to be honest, if we're doing this, I think. And then get Swampert Kyogre onto the field, and then hope that we've got enough with Water Spout, Stomping Tantrum to get the Ferrothorn. It's a bit like how we've been dealing with the Amoongus. But by doing that, it's detracting all of our attention away from the other side of the field. Or concentrating just down to the Ferrothorn. But... I mean, we get away with it here. With the Kyogre protecting, that's pretty huge for us. That is massive for us. Um, and a Leech Seed as well. Okay, that's like... Couldn't have asked for anything better. Because now we've got the fake out and the hurricane into that Kyogre. I don't really care about the Ferrothorn. It can take down our Tornadus now if it wants to. Um, I'd suspect it probably protects. I mean, one of the things we could potentially do is go uh, fake out and then hurricane into the Ferrothorn. I just do think the Ferrothorn probably does protect here. It's just the Kyogre is not, it has protected the last turn. It's just whether or not the extra damage onto the Ferrothorn is worth it. Um, whereas I think getting the Kyogre in, in range of like a Stomp and Tantrum and... Okay, we're going to see the Ferrothorn withdraw. That's fine. <clears throat> I feel like we're getting let off the hook here a lot. Like over and over and over again. We do get the Hurricane into the, the Kyogre. My opponent's doing a nice job of kind of not allowing us to get, make the most of our Tailwind turns here. So I think this turn we'll switch in Kyogre and we're probably going to be better off sacking... Yeah, sacking our Taunt Aegis. I'm going to Taunt the Kyogre because if I can get a Taunt off onto it, it kind of stops it from protecting. And that makes things a bit easier when we bring in Kyogre Swampert. Because a Water Spout and Stomping Tantrum will get the Kyogre now, I would imagine. 
And as long as we can get rid of the Kyogre, it means we got Incineroar has an easier job against the Ferrothorn. You still gotta consider the Ray. The Ray is definitely still a threat. Um, and the longer it's taken us to break down these Pokemon, the more damage we're taking, making life a lot easier for when that Ray comes in. And this is one of the beauty, like the, the great things about this sort of call, you know. Um, it wears you down, and wears you down, and wears you down. So we'll get the taunt into the Ferrothorn, which isn't bad. I mean, it stops it protecting, it stops it. Um, yeah, there's the, the U turn. Hmm. And then we've got to hop. We've got to hop that a Stomping Tantrum. And a water spout is enough to get the Ferrothorn, because I'd imagine the Kyogre comes back in now. Kyogre! There we go. It's nuts. I just don't. I just don't see a Stomping Tantrum and a Water Spout being enough to get the Ferrothorn. It's not a Kalk I've done, if I'm like completely honest with you. I mean, we've got a full power Kyogre here. Stomping's gonna do more. Just with the stab that we've got, so I've gotta go for that. The Ferrothorn can't protect, but it can pick up the knockout here if we don't if we don't KO it. Kinda of want that double power stomping tantrum now. That's that's kind of like the dream right now, because then we guarantee the, the water spout and stomping tantrum KO onto the Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn gonna retreat though. That's interesting because now we take down the Incineroar with the Water Spout um, and we probably are gonna be able to pick up the knockout onto the Kyogre if it doesn't protect here. Oh no. No, 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 we go first. That's not what we wanted. I mean, pick up the knockout there. That's a crit. Ugh. So this Swamper today, it's like critting, freezing. It's doing all the RNG stuff. Should take this thing to Bristol. See an origin pulse. It does hit, it does connect. Okay. I think. Does that tailwind run out? Swamper just barely hangs on. Tailwind pit is out now. But the Kyogre's at such low health now. We can pick up the knockout onto it with an origin pulse or a, a, a stomping tantrum. But the ray is going to be lying, waiting to come in. And do some mischief. You can tell the Ray. Yeah, here he comes. Here he comes, big bad boy Ray. Uh, and it's whether or not I should have been paying attention. I don't know if we outspeed the opposing Kyogre or not. Um, but I'm gonna have to try. Hmm. Just one boat goes down to an extreme speed. That's the only thing. I mean, one thing we could potentially do here is actually just go for an Origin Pulse. And protect Swampert. Because I was initially thinking we switch in Incineroar there, but that gets punished if their Kyogre is faster than ours, which it likely is. Um, and the Origin Pulse take us down, and then we lose a way to at least nerf the Rayquaza and then deal with the Ferrothorn. So seeing the Rayquaza, it is going to mega evolve. Hopefully it goes for the extreme speed into the Swampert. Come on, please do that. Please do it. Leave our Kyogre alone. <laughs> Leave the whale. Go for the Swamp. Come on. The Toad's more attractive to go for, Dragon Ascent. Yeah, you're going for the right target. So nicely played by my opponent, picking the right slot. Identifying the threat. Yeah. Knowing that the Swampert's in... Um, that extreme speed range as well makes it a bit easier for my opponent. I mean, Kyogre takes it. We're not in the best position at all. Um, but the door is open now for our Incineroar to come in. Um, and I think what we have to do is protect Ogre. It's really, really obvious. Or do we switch in? Do we switch into Incineroar here? And lose... I don't want to lose one, but if I'm like completely honest with you, I'd rather make this play and go into to Incineroar here. And then we kind of force the opposing Kyogre to come back on the field to protect that Ferrothorn. That's the thing. And that's where we have to watch out for. Because then we can maybe attack into the, that Rayquaza slot. Because it'll want to reset its Intimidate drop, for sure. Okay. 
Right. That's actually big for us because we can fake that slot out the next turn if it does decide to stay on the field. We protect Kyogre and Leech Seed. Yeah, going for the Incineroar. Now we've got a decision to make. Do they switch out the Rayquaza into the Kyogre? Which I imagine they probably do. Do do. And if they do that, we can't touch the Ferrothorn. We just can't. We can Ice Beam it. Um. Will a U-turn be enough to get the Rayquaza? Uh, the Kyogre on the switch in, that's the big thing. I don't think it will be. It's just you kind of want the Intimidate back onto the field for the Rayquaza, that's it. I'm going to U-turn out onto the Rayquaza slot. I'm going to expect it to switch out now to Kyogre. It would make sense that my opponent would do that. That means we do lose Kyogre, but we get the Intimidate back on to the field. And that's it's kind of important for us against this Rayquaza, yeah. Okay. It's just about whether or not the U-turn picks up the Kyogre. It's such low health as well. I can imagine we do. We're not intimidated. So, my best guess would be. And I mean, the thing is, like, we could Ice Beam freeze the Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn protects. You're a madman. I don't agree with that at all. I think you've got to, I think you've got to attack here. I think there's no reason not to attack because you've got the rain up. You're not worried about the potential um, Flare Blitz coming in there. And we could potentially maneuver our field around so we could... Uh, it, it's hard though, isn't it? Because we need Swampy in the rain. The Rayquaza, unless the Rayquaza, no, the Rayquaza is not banded because it's protected, right? There's a strong wind coming back. <sighs> okay, Kyogre, we can protect. Do we want to protect? I mean, to be honest, we could Ice Punch and Ice Beam the Rayquaza. They can only attack one target, but they can clear the field. But it's whether or not an ice beam will be enough to take it down, and I, I really don't think it will be. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna double into it if I can. If I've got time, let's double into it. Sorry, the cogs are going, and I'm just like, let's just do it. Let's try. Extreme speed into Swamper. Okay. Can a nice beam take it down? I don't know if it will be enough. It will be very close. It will be very close. If we can take it down, though, that's huge for us because then Incineroar can win this game. Come on. Yes. Come on. KO. Oh, come on. Critical hit. <laughs> I get excited. I can't get excited about that. I cannot get excited about that. Ferrothorn has the hardest time in the world, and I can't believe this. And yeah, there's the there's the disconnect right there. And I mean, you can't really blame my opponent for that one. I mean, you can. I mean, no situation should you really ever do that, but you can kind of understand why. That's them probably picking their DS up and throwing it at the wall. That's what I would have done in that situation. So big apologies to my opponent. It's been a bit of a, a crazy RNG episode today. I mean, we've had some bad RNG on, on ourselves previously on the channel. I never, th I don't think we've ever had it as favorable <laughs> for us. So I probably wasted it all and I'm going to have none in Bristol. Typical. But guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. It has been a lot of fun. Um, I'll be back tomorrow with this team. And like I say, we're going to change things up for Friday based on your suggestions. Keep your comments coming. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the RNG today. It would be great to hear from you. And uh, just a big shout out to both my opponents um, because I know how it feels and being on the receiving end of that, it's uh, it's never fair. And definitely game one, we, we got very lucky. I'd like to do the calc on the Rayquaza because I know the, the Ice Beam would be doing a lot of damage. It would be very close depending on how it was built, um, whether or not it picks up the kill or not. But um, the crit kind of spoiled the whole thing there. But... I'm going to say goodbye, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Have a great rest of your day, whatever time of day it is, and we'll be back with more. 
VGC 2019 Ultra Series tomorrow. So until then, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.